you see, these meetings are wonderful. You know, my clock is not uh, ticking, so <laughs> I have more than five minutes. Is it by design? Okay, now oh, it started. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I, 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 I already, yes, okay, I got it. I already learned from the previous speaker that uh, every pitch has to be 30 to 50 seconds, and I will actually put it to work tomorrow at Los Angeles at the Milken Conference, so thank you very much. I learned something. Um, but today I want to talk about stable coins and related subject in a more broad context. I'm a CTO of uh, Sila Money, so which is one of the companies which tries to capitalize on uh, building stable coin. If you're interested, uh, find me over there or check our website at silamoney.com. Uh, but uh, broadly speaking, the debate of whether or not uh, what is money and how it operates can be traced back all the way to classic Greece. And you know, Aristotle put it very convincingly that uh, uh, you know, money is a construct of law. I actually follow the same uh, kind of uh, dictum and uh, in fact more recently in a wonderful movie heist uh, you know the criminal mastermind Bergman said we all need money we all love money that's why it's called money so in a sense without reading Aristotle he figured that much out right so at the same time you know kind of the way current monetary system operates is deeply unsatisfactory on several grounds you know be it uh, practicalities or be it theoretical discourse. And I have to say uh, that I have dog, dogs, I have actually a dog at home. His name is Doyle, a French bulldog. But I mean, I have two dogs in this fight. So one as an entrepreneur, I try to build a stable coin on a blockchain. The other as an academic, I try to build a um, stock flow consistent uh, theory of money, uh, which is at odds, at sharp odds with the existing uh, uh, with the existing macroeconomics, but I'm quite proud of it because to be aligned with the existing macroeconomics is, means to be kind of behind of everything. So anyway, so kind of uh, the p people, uh, I'm sorry, uh, people in, uh, in the know have figured out that the existing monetary system, which very sharply uh, leaning towards uh, the US dollar is kind of unstable in some degree and something else is needed. And so this is uh, what uh, uh, we're trying to do, both uh, practically and theoretically. So as I said, existing banking and payment system, while still working, are obsolete and no longer aligned with what is needed. As far as macroeconomic is concerned, it's obsolete and uh, not working, right? So this is an interesting distinction. Uh, the part of the equation is that the internet protocols, TCP IP, which unleashed an enormous wave of creativity everywhere, uh, do not really uh, ac ac accumulate uh, identity and money, and that is what we try to, to achieve. So having a regulatory compliant fiat bad tokenized medium of exchange will fill this gap, and then based on what Sandy and I have been doing on trade coin, you can actually achieve the second goal of having something which is supranational. Current uh, system is very painful. People think that, you know, when Alice pays Bob, and uh, by the way, in all my classes, Alice always pays Bob. We should actually shift it around. I mean, I think there is this disbalance. But anyway, so you can see that there are 13 arrows which are associated with moving money in a simple credit card transaction. It's deeply unsatisfactory, and the actual settlement is actually outside of this picture anyway. So you can potentially do it on, on, on the blockchain, but it is very hard. The hardness comes from the fact that all the existing cryptocurrencies, uh, you know, designed by themselves are inherently unstable. It's like a group of people trying to blow a balloon and keep it uh, in the middle of the circle. As soon as somebody starts to blow harder or lower, you know, the thing goes away and that's how it all operates. So that's all you need to know why Bitcoin went from 100, uh, I'm sorry, 1,000 to 20,000 and then to 3,000. That's exactly this effect. So to build a stable coin is very hard. You have several possibilities, fully collateralized tokens. That's what Seal is pursuing, partially collateralized tokens. This is a harebrained idea which I'm not going to dwell upon. And tokens which are collateralized with cryptos, that's better. And then dynamically stabilized to tokens. This is a particular kind of a challenging thing. It has been tried by the Baron Munhausen, who pulled himself on the uh, horse he was riding out of the mire by using a, 
a pointy tail. Unfortunately, I don't have a pointy tail, but otherwise I'll show you. But that's roughly the same uh, degree of intellectual discourse. This cannot work, but it's very attractive. And so we have tokens distinguished, um, collateralized by fiat, like SILA, and tokens collateralized by real assets, like uh, uh, digital trade coin, and that's what we are trying to accomplish. So that's it.